lot more motorsports to come your way throughout the weekend. NASCAR Sprint Cup Happy Hour coming up next here in Texas. The NHRA uh, Las Vegas Nationals qualifying tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. We'll begin our Sunday coverage with NASCAR now at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll also wrap up today at 10 p.m. NASCAR Sprint Cup uh, Dickies 500 in Texas on ABC tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And we'll NHRA Nationals Finals from Las Vegas. They'll roll the dice in Vegas at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN2. Lap 33 here in Texas, and Kyle Busch is our second leader of the day. As we check in with the boys out of the ESPN Pit Studio, Alan, Rusty, and Brad. All right, Doc, of course, Kyle Busch led more than half the race here back in April. Strong so far. All right, looks good again on that top side of the racetrack we talked so much about. Brad is coming in again. I mean, they got that momentum, and you know what? That's one thing I like about this racetrack. They can run the bottom, the middle, the top, and it's just a real racy speedway. Boy, Kyle Busch, he's using every inch of his track today to get those passes. Yeah, he is. It's very impressive how he took the lead from Kevin Harvick. I mean, he got by him and then just kind of checked out. He's pulled away. You can see that race car is hunting that clean air. He is gone. But uh, as you look back in the lineup, Bobby Hamilton Jr., he is stuck there in fourth position. He is maintaining speed. I think he can have a great finish today. Why don't we check out how some of those front runners are fearing, what they're saying to their pit crews. We go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance and start in the leader's pit. Alan, Alan, just because Jason Ratcliffe, the former crew chief of this 18 car, is not at the racetrack and has been serving a suspension since late summer, don't think he's made, not making an impact. He's back at the shop preparing the car, and this weekend, while well, he was in communication with interim crew chief Joel Weidman, during practice, they felt like they got off base quite a bit. Weidman made a phone call to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe made, gave some suggestions. They made those adjustments. The car has responded very positively and they're out front Dave. When Kevin Harvick got passed for the lead by Kyle Busch you might have noticed he immediately shot to the top of the racetrack that wasn't uncalculated he asked his spotter anybody else back there and when he knew that the track was clear he went up to try that high line it's not been his preferred line throughout this run but you can see he still tends to go up there and check and see if the grip level and the speed of his race car is something he can use to his advantage later on. Shannon? Dave right now Carl Edwards is saying that the car is just a little bit snug through the turn and a little bit loose off. He told his crew chief, Drew Blinkenserfer, we don't need major changes, maybe just a little something when we come down pit road. But I did speak with Drew Blinkenserfer today. He told me that they know that they have to make up 39 points, 40 points each race if they want to beat Clint Boyer in this championship point. He said if we can do that today in the race, it's a dogfight. Mike? Shannon, a solid top three qualifying effort was just what Bobby Hamilton Jr. and this 25 team needed. They are on the bubble. They were almost out of business after last week in Memphis. Bobby Hamilton Jr. instead dipped into his own checkbook, wrote a check for $380,000 just to keep this team alive for the final three races. So far, it's paying off. They've run inside the top five most of the afternoon and is very happy with the race car, although he's battling for that position right now with Mark Martin. Martin to the inside. He may take the spot. You know, I spoke with his crew chief earlier this week. He said the biggest benefit of having Mark Martin is his ability to diagnose what's going on with the race car. In fact, they were real loose in practice uh, yesterday, and they got together. Mark Martin actually making the setup changes, giving Cam Schrader the advice on what to do. They made those adjustments, changing the crossway, changing the track bar, and the car is much, much better, just a little bit tight. Cliff Boyer battling for the championship. He lost 80 points a week ago, but that's not really what's weighing on his mind. What's weighing on his mind is that he has not been to victory lane since this spring. He said this weekend he needs to get another win and feels terrible because he feels like he, quote, gave two away. Referencing Bristol and Richmond earlier this year, he feels like he needs to make it up to the team and get back to victory lane, Shannon. Joey Logano just dropped out of the top five. I spoke with Logano before the race started today. He said it's been a very tough weekend, especially on the cup side, qualified 43rd for that race. He said, for some reason, we just can't get the cup stuff. That's why it's so nice to come over here to the nationwide side and run so well. But he did just drop out of the top five. The car is just a little bit loose for Logano right now. Now, David Strebby currently running right behind him is looking just to survive this race. He says with the hot conditions, the track is so slick. We just need to get a good finish here today and survive the Texas race. Now, right behind him is David Reagan. This is a young man who has come on strong at the end of the season. Right now, David Reagan is saying that the car is a little bit loose. Expect an air pressure adjustment on the next pit stop. The 
car. Brian Vickers running back with this group now, guys. That car is still loose. And I asked Trent Owens about his great stats this year. You know, ever since he said, you know, ever since uh, Brian has been involved with this race car, middle of last year, it's been a good fit. He trusts us. He trusts the race cars. Plus, we put him at some of his best tracks, which are these intermediate style high bank tracks. Vickers waiting for that first pit stop to help a loose race car. Jamie and Scott Wimmer behind him, working his way up. He says he's real loose in the center, and they're telling him his spotter's telling him to run high. That may work better. Now I talked to Scott Wimmer before he got in the car, and he said, you know, I'm really looking for a ride next year, and definitely wants to be in Cup. And he said, but with what's happening in the economy, I he said I was working with a sponsor last week. We were talking, things were looking good for next year, and then boom, the stock market went down, and they said, nope, we're going to wait a little while. So Scott Wimmer's last race is with this team, looking for a ride in 2009. Behind him, Brad Keselowski says he's a six loose on a scale of one to ten. He said he's just hanging on. It's been a long run for him so far, but I talked to Pop Senior crew chief that we heard from as the in-race reporter earlier, and he said right now, because they know the championship is out of reach for them, they are in test mode, so they're trying things to build for this team for 2009. Shannon? Denny Hamlin qualified 22nd for this race in this 32 car. Hamlin told me before he climbed in the car that he did not know what to expect from this racetrack. He said with the slick conditions, it was going to be crazy the first couple laps, and of course, He's already had some contact on the track twice today. Denny Hamlin just trying to hold on to that 32 right now. Alan? All right, Shannon, thanks. So there are your top 13 as uh, we check in in our nationwide up to speed. Kevin Harvick led the first 22 laps. Now Kyle Busch has been out in front since the NASCAR Nationwide Series in Texas. Under caution for the first time today here at Texas Motor Speedway, the 52 car of Donnie Neuenberger has had contact with the front straightaway wall. Now there was some contact between this car and the seven of Mike Wallace. Yeah, Mike Wallace and Stephen Wallace were racing coming out of turn four and uh, the 52 car tried to move up out of the way of, of Stephen Wallace in the 66 and Mike got into the back of the 52 right on the front stretch. See him just before the start finish line right here. Mike's just trying to come down. Clips the 52 car. New car for Jimmy Means in that organization. So a tough one here. Our Castrol GTX triple pits as the leaders are on pit road. Mike. And we begin with Kyle Busch. He's very happy with his race car, not calling for any changes, just four tires and fuel to the leader's machine. Dave. 33 is on pit road. They gave up second position. It'll be just an air pressure adjustment for Kevin. Don't get the front any tighter, but I've got to have the rear end tightened up just a little bit. Jamie, Shannon. Carl just asking for overall grip on this number 60 car. They're going to take four tires. They are going to make an air pressure adjustment on this 60 car for, for Carl Edwards just to help him out a little bit. And the 18 wins battle off pit road. Just a shade over 14 seconds on the pit stop for Kyle Busch. He will hold the point. Joey Logano second. Reagan's Trimmy, Scott Wimmer gains a spot, the 29 bunch, Pat Smith and company, David Rudeman's uh, group. Good pit stop there for uh, Jerry Baxter and the Michael Waltrip team. Denny Hamlin loses two spots, and Jason Leffler will move into the top 10 by virtue of that pit stop. The lucky dog is the 40 car, Juan Pablo Montoya. First car lap down, and he gets the luck, Aaron's lucky dog free pass. Back with a restart in just a moment. 